welcome to our service this morning. We're happy to have you all around, um, particularly if you're coming for the first time. Uh, you are not a regular attendant, I mean, um, you are not a regular member that comes to our services regularly. We're happy to have you around this morning. And also we want to welcome our webcast audience, those that are watching us from wherever they are located all over the world. May God bless you as you come with us this morning. Um, we've had our Sunday school this morning and it was a time of blessing. And if you are just joining us, all that you have missed as part of the service is the prelude that the choir has given us. We want to appreciate the um, piano um, voluntary that was given by Brother Godwin, and then the choir sang that medley that includes It's So Sweet to Trust Jesus, and then we've just heard that quartet, uh, No Silver, No Gold. It's now our turn to sing together and our first hymn will be hymn 139, and Sister Emma will be leading us. God bless you as you come along. We sing verse 1 and 3. 118, the same book, 1 and 3. Save in the arms of Jesus, save on his gentle breast. There by his love I shed as sweetly my soul shall rest. We'll sing verses 1, 3, God. Save in the arms of
for that to happen, Amen. unbelief must go. Amen. We want to sing 115, hymn 115, Be gone, unbelief. My Savior is near. Let's sing verses 1 to 4 sitting. 1 to 4 sitting. God. Be gone, unbelief. Ancient word, ancient word. We will sing the three verses. Ancient word.
May that word bring change today. Amen. To you, Amen. to me, Amen. to all of us, Amen. may we be a change church. Amen. Amen. Want to sing 156 before we pray? 156 that says, 156 CGS says, Oh Jesus, I have promised to save thee to the end. Let's sing verses 1, 3. If you can, let's stand to sing the three verses 1, 3, and 5. 1, 3, and 5. to pray, we'll ask Brad Godwin to please come forward and lead us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the wonderful privilege to be here in your presence this morning. Oh, you've called us apart from the hustle, from the bustle, from the running around, from the rat race. And you say, come aside. I have something more for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we've just sung that, Lord, we have promised. Lord Jesus, indeed we have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, Jesus Christ, give us that grace. Give us that strength. Oh, this morning, renew our vow. Renew our promise. Renew our stand. Renew, oh God, that love, that hunger, that zeal that we had for you. Lord Jesus, bless us this morning. Oh Lord, your servant whom you will send this morning. Oh, fill him. Just fill him, Lord. Every word that he will open his mouth to utter. Oh God, fill it, Lord. Lord, let it minister. Minister to each and every one of us. Oh, that miracle that you always do. That the one word that will come out will yet minister to over hundreds of souls. Lord, do that again this morning. Bless us and make us a blessing. Thank you because we know you've done even more than with us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Out of James 122 comes the call for Junior Street. Who will live for Christ the risen Lord? Listen to the trumpets call, ringing out to one and all. Be ye new as all the world. Be ye new as of the world. Be ye new as of the world. Be ye new. 
our scripture reading for this solemn devotional service is taken from the book of James, chapter 1. We're reading from 21 to the end. James 1, 21. Wherefore, lay apart all fitness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, and breatheth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain, 27 and the last. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the father of this is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I have trod has brought me near and God doth it led to sorrow's gate do not thy way I choose in my way I my lives that joy that yet for me oh it no where i wish to be no where i wish to go for one my that i should choose my way the lord is Cheers for me, tis better for I know, so let him bid me go.
pleasure chills my breath. That love and charm chills from me. Tis there is on fire right now. So let him beat me go. to James chapter 1, the epistle of James chapter 1, I'll read verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your, your own selves. Verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Yeah. May our God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. There is one thing to be deceived, and there is one thing to deceive yourself. There is one thing to know all what we need to do, and there is one thing to be refrained all the information from you. But I want us to look this morning on doers of the word. The word is available. Thank God in our own generation, all of us we can read, or most all of us, let me put it that way, we can read. We can digest the word of God, and after that it's up to us what we do with it. It's not up, your parents, my parents can influence me, my brothers, my sisters can influence me, the preacher can influence me, my colleagues can influence me, but it's left up to me whether I'm a doer of the word or not. Verse 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I want to explore these two aspects that are put before us in verse 27. One is to remain unspotted from the world, and the other one is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. This verse is really in time or in line with what our master said of the greatest commandment, which is, we can read together in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. The gospel according to Matthew, 20, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments 
hangs all the law on the prophets. What is common with us nowadays is we want to have a good relationship with our master and completely forget the relationship with our neighbor. Before God, they are equal weight. Our relationship with God should be a catalyst to bring us closer to our neighbor. Should be a way that directs us how to live with our neighbor. Maybe let's start by looking at this unsported from the world. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to... He will justify us. He will change us from our unrighteous ways. He will save our soul. That's the word of God. Is available for us. What do we do with it? It's one thing to hear the word of God and be emotional about it. It's one thing to apply it in our hearts. We can be justified by faith, but it's not a magic thing. We have to apply our hearts. There is a part that we need to to do. That is to present ourselves before God and confess our sins. That is the doing part from our side. And God will take control and he will save our soul. Same applies to our sanctification of our souls. We don't just sit back and say, God sanctify me. There is a portion that we need to play. The word is there. We need to exercise that faith. We need to to search ourselves inwardly and around us and pour everything before God. And God will surely save our souls, and sanctify us. Verse 21 says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. We have to lay aside. It is one thing to come to church and listen to the word of God and read the Bible, and immediately after leaving, leaving church, we are going back to our own ways. Irrespective of how articulate was the, the preacher or how nice the songs were, if we don't apply the word, the word won't make any impact in our life. Laying apart all filthiness. We have to make conscious decisions that this time around, I'm not going to go this way. I'm not going to entertain this kind of company. I'm not going to watch this particular thing. I'm not going to say this particular thing. It comes from within. And it has to be expressed outwardly. We are still exploring this bottom line of remaining unspotted from the world, which is the baseline of us having a relationship with our God. That's how we show the love, that we love our God with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our might and strength. By moving away from all things of this world, by staying away from the sins of this world, which pollutes us. You know, sometimes, maybe growing up in the church, you might think Christianity is, 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 a, is, is a magic that, I guess that's what they say, then they get a, a dove out or something comes out. 
Christianity is not only about miracles. Christianity is more than miracles. A miracle is just an aspect of it. But if we take Christianity as something that we come to our knees and pray and a miracle should happen, we need to explore the word of God. God is calling us to more, to read the word and apply it and be doers of it. I'm not doubting that when we pray on our knees at our altars, God can perform miracles whereby we don't need to do anything. But in most cases, God asks us to take a step of faith. God asks us to be involved in one of the, some of the answers. Verse 21. No, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and buildeth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. We can read all the doctrines. We can read all the, 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 our tracts, our gospel literatures. We can be very articulate or very perfect in what we do in church. But if we don't train our tongue, the same thing that we use to praise the God, to God, the God we love will be the same thing that will land us in hell. The same time that we use to praise God is the same time that we cause conflicts among us. The same time that we use to lie is the same time that we might end up planting all sorts of things that are not the same, that are not of God. But the Bible, James here is saying, it puts man's religion in vain. You have to exercise to train your tongue to speak the rightful words. I work in the construction industry. And if you visit the site as often, the boys and girls that are there, their tongues have been turned to speak something else. A sentence cannot finish without a swear word. The communication, if you want something to get things done, you have to use some words. That's how they see it. To get things going. When Jesus saves our souls and sanctify us, he cleans our innermost. He purifies the source of our thoughts. He purifies us in out. But there is an action that we need to do to keep that line connected, to remain unspotted from the world, to train our tongue to speak the right things. If you trained your tongue all the rest of your life to be a liar, the Spirit of God, once you get saved, it will help you. It will, it, 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 it will remind you. The Spirit of God will prick you inside you to tell you that something that you're about to say is a lie. But remember, your tongue is used to we need to do something about it. That is taming of our, our tongues. It might be one of, the smaller, one of the smallest parts of our body, but it does too much damage. You don't need to bring a gun to kill someone. You can just speak it. And that destroys a human being. Coming to church is not just a university for gathering <coughs> spiritual knowledge. I believe anyone here, if we 
we, we've asked so many people around here about what, what you need to be saved, what you need to be sanctified, what does the scripture say. Because we come to church from January to December, some of us who might be already professors in religion, some of us, we can articulate the scriptures very well because that's what we do every Sunday. That's what we do every Wednesday. That's what we do every Friday. That's what we do every morning in our devotions. We have something every morning coming to our inbox to read our devotions. We have amassed so much knowledge that we can write so many theses about them. But Christianity is more than knowledge. Christianity or coming to church is more than attending a lecture. There is the doing side of it. I know most people here maybe have so many degrees. Some of them, you might not even be using them. But we have them, isn't it? We have paste or maybe even presented in our bedrooms that this particular year I did this degree, this particular year I did this degree, I've moved to masters. They're all there. They just signify that we have gathered the knowledge and someone have, has approved that we have got that knowledge. But there is the other bit of the doing side of it. A degree can take you to an interview, but it, will not, it won't give you the job. It opens the way to an interview. Then you got to do something from there. And if they look at your qualifications and say, wow, they're brilliant, we give him the benefit of the doubt because an interview can only be an hour. Once you turn up at work, the degrees are besides. Yeah. Okay. That somewhere in the shelf is the doing of it. Yeah. That now justifies your degrees. What do you think about us? Our profession of Christianity, our knowledge of scripture is good. I'm not discounting that. Our knowledge of scripture is good for us. But the, the bit that I'm pushing to, to this morning or about afternoon is the doing side of what do we do with the knowledge we have amassed? Has it made us to be saved, those who are not saved? Have we managed to get sanctification out of it, those who are not sanctified? Have we managed to get the Holy Ghost baptism out of it, those who are not? I read a story of a man, a businessman who went, who had a, a, a lovely business going very well. And uh, he, he decided to take a long vacation away. And he, he left and, and brought someone to be in charge of the place as he was leaving. And he told him because he had to move and go quickly, he will give him directives as he, as he, when he's away. And he brought this man and told him that, yeah, I'll be leaving, you'll be in charge. I expect every, you will expect him to do everything and progress the business. And he, he, the businessman went away. And when he was away, he sent some directives and instructions to help the guy in charge to keep the business going. And he was faithful and he provided those directions and instructions. And he didn't get any feedback. He didn't even, the guy didn't even come back to say, let's discuss this and how did you used to do it? I need to apply it this way. He didn't say anything. Then the businessman was a bit worried and he said, let me go back and see what's going on, just to come in. He found people were just relaxed and uh, having a good time in the working area. Out of his frustration and anger, he approached the guy he left in charge. 
What is going on? Did you receive the instruction that I've given you? He said, yes, I have. What's wrong with you? Chill. He was like, then the businessman was like, what is going on? He said, what did you do with the instructions that I've given you? He said, I've read them. I've studied them. I've, I've, you can see I've written my notes here about them. I even have shared them with our employees. Look at the workshops we have attended. And this is it. But what did you do with those workshops? What did you do with those instructions? Nothing, because nothing was happening. Aren't we doing the same to our Lord Jesus Christ? He even memorized some of the instructions. Don't we know the scripture of our head? What do we then do with it? Is what matters. To know the scriptures is a good thing. But if we only stop there, will it profit us? It won't profit us. That is our relationship with God. We need to get the scriptures. We need to learn the word. And the word has to make an impact in, impact in our lives. Yes. Those Asian words we sang about. I'm reminded when I grew up at school, I understand there was a, there was a teacher who kind of engaged his students and trying for them to pass their exam. And one of the questions that was going to come was to do who discovered the cape, I think. And I think the answer was Vasco da Gama. And he turned that into a song. The little girls and boys will sing who discovered the, the cape. And this big boy will say Vasco da Gama as a, as, as a accompanying song. The exam came. And the question was, who discovered the cave? Vasco da Gam didn't appear in the exam paper. Are we not doing that to our Lord? We have sung the song, the choir saying, be ye doers of the word. We know all this. We need to take a step further and apply the word in our hearts and do them so that we remain unspotted from the world. The second bit of it is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep him, oh, to, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. I'm reading James chapter 1, verse 27. Let's open to Matthew chapter 25. I'll read from verse 35. I'm just going in the middle of a, a message from Jesus Christ, of one of his parables, when he was defining those who will make heaven, those who will inherit the kingdom of God. He's saying, For I was hungered, hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. This is the other portion of the scripture that we need to apply and do. You know, it's easy to say, my relationship with God is perfect. Amen to that. I have that spiritual connection. <clears throat> but Jesus is asking us, when we see the hungry and thirsty, what do we do? Do we only whisper a prayer? Or we go beyond that? Isaiah 58 verse 7. He 
Here, Isaiah was talking about the fast that is right. Fasting that is right. Verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover them, and that thou hide not thy, thyself from thy own flesh. I want us to reflect. I want us to, even myself, I'm reflecting and asking myself, as much as I'm calling myself a Christian, as much as I'm, I'm saying I'm saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, there is this other bit, which is like unto the first. Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart and strength and everything. And yes, we have that connection. He's saying, like unto the first, like give it equal weight, give it equal importance, give it equal consideration. What about the hungry amongst us? What do we do about it? I know everyone is saying, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. All of us, we are poor. That is our, 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 our perception, isn't it? God is saying, even in that poverty that you are claiming, maybe, there is someone poorer than you. Yeah. Even in that riches we are claiming, amen? amen. There is someone that is hungry and thirsty. What are we doing about it? When last have you fed someone that is not your friend? When last have I given water to someone that is not within my circle of trust? You know, there are others, those who are put outside the circle of trust. When last have I shown this? But this is what Jesus gave as an example. In that Matthew 25, he started with the ten virgins. He, that was, he's coming anytime. Be ready. Then he went into the talents. That's the next parable he, he, in verse, chapter 25. He said, I've deposited some talents in you. Go and do something with them. Make them grow. Then he's saying now, at the end of that chapter, he's saying, those who will inherit the kingdom of heaven... Are those who feed the hungry. Amen. Not who can recite the Bible from Genesis to, to Revelation. As good as that is, I'm not going to undermine that. As good that, as that is, and as good as we need to read the word of God, we need to apply it. Yes. It needs to be evident in our lives. That we are feeding the hungry. Christmas is coming. I know we, it's a family time. Let's remember the lonely boys and girls who wouldn't have their family around. Let's remember them. It's our duty to extend that invitation to that brother who is coming abroad to, to study maybe or that sister who's coming abroad to study, or that person who's coming abroad to, to learn or to work, and he doesn't have a friend yet. Let it be a lovely Christmas for all, for all of us. Amen. Strangers. The Bible talks about strangers. I was a stranger and you took me in. It's a difficult thing, isn't it? Strangers, we are, we are living in a world that we are confined to our own walls and it's very difficult to bring people in because we are suspicious of them. May God help us. Amen. May God help us. We need to bring in strangers in. The Bible says some of you, some have entertained strangers and they tend to be, to, to be, to be angels. Yeah. They can turn up to be your, your blessings. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, 
for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Still in Matthew 25, verse 35, he talks about the naked, the sick, and people in prison. It's not my word. It's the word of God. It's reminding us, as much as we are saying we have a good connection with our Lord Jesus Christ, like unto that, he's saying, let's clothe the naked. Let's visit the sick. When last did I share my best suit with a, a brother that I think is struggling? It's not all about money. When last did I visit the sick? Of course, we have many sick amongst us. How are we doing on that aspect? The Bible says, those who clothe the naked, those who visit the sick, those who visit the, the ones in prison, those are the ones, once you do that, you're doing it unto the Lord. Yes. Yeah. That's the Bible saying. And we just need to, to, to search ourselves and let not this be only an academic knowledge. We need to have to apply it in our lives. It needs to form part of us. I'm reading from James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Our, our houses are closed houses. Are we inviting people in? Maybe not a total stranger, but I leave you to the spirit how it leads you. But to our brethren here, are we a, fam a true family? Or those only who come to our houses are those who are in our circle of trust or our only friends? How open are we to our brethren? The Lord today is saying to us, as much as we tarry in the world, are sorting up our heavenly connection, as much as we seek for our salvation, as much as we confess our sins daily, and God honoring that and forgiving us, let's not forget the relationship with our brethren. Yeah. It's like unto the first. We need to be doers of the word. Yes. And not only hearers. Because if we only hear the word and, and not apply it, James is saying to us that we are deceiving ourselves. James chapter 1, verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth, forgetteth what manner of man he was. Aren't we deceiving ourselves? If we know all this, we can come before the altars through emotions. We can do all those resol resolutions. Then after the church, how many times have you left the church after hearing a powerful sermon or hearing the man of God that you, you look up to say the word of God and immediately after you have left, you are back to where square one. How does that profit us? If I look at the mirror today and look at my tie there and I don't put it right, what was the point in looking into that mirror? That's what the message is saying. If you look into the mirror, you have to pull it back and look a bit huh, smart on point. And then you can go out. Let us use the word of God to direct us. In closing, James chapter 1, verse 25. 
But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. There is blessing to doing God's word. I said there is blessing being a doer of the word. There is a blessing. It's not only of life eternal, but the Bible says, blessed in his deed. In what you do, by applying the word of God and doing it is a formula for success. There is the platform for getting being blessed. There is the platform or a way that you can go out there and be an achiever. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. Those are the things we are talking about. That long list that you bring, we bring to church every Sunday. God bless this one. God deliver me from this one. God open this journey. God open this door. They will be added. Amen. You will be, your deeds will be blessed. Amen. Because we have chosen to be doers of the word. Not only hearers. We read but at the end of the Sunday school this same verse, James chapter 13, verse 17. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Happy are ye if you do them. When you are a doer of the word, it doesn't take you to depression. He said, happy are ye if you do them. Yeah. There is joy unspeakable. Yes. There is peace. Yes. There is happiness yeah. in doing the things of God, yeah. in doing the word of God. Yeah. I challenge you this afternoon. Let us not only amass the knowledge of the scriptures, but rather also let us be doers of the word. And through that, we will be blessed indeed. Amen. And it will radiate out. May we come to the altars of prayer as we finish. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for hitting the nail right on the head for us all this afternoon. Lord, we just ask that you help us, that we will not be hearers only, but doers of your word. Lord, that as we go on our knees and cry out loud unto you, 
you will come down and help us. Help us to tame our tongues. Help us, O Lord, to discipline our hearts. Help us, O Lord, God, to discipline our thoughts. Help us, dear Lord, to serve you not only in words, but in actions. Pray for us, O Lord. We ask that you please save souls this afternoon. And as many as are looking up to you for sanctification, that you will sanctify them. And that you will baptize, O Lord. Heal the sick. Lord, encourage us. Strengthen us, O God. Thank you for answered prayers as we have prayed in Jesus' name.